Hey, Dr. Biology here, and this video is to do with the AQA A level biology gas exchange in fish. So, the main objectives of this lesson will be to know the adaptations of gas exchange surfaces shown by gas exchange across the gills of a fish, understand how fish pass water over their gills, that's related to the OCR specification content, and understand the benefits of the counter current principle. So the first thing we need to look at is fish ventilation. Now this is covered mainly in the OCR exam board, um, but I will go through it because I think it's quite uh, useful to understand how the gills actually um, exchange gases from the water. So if we look at the left hand view, we can see that the mouth is open, the buccal chamber expands okay and it expands because the buccal floor moves down and therefore reduces the pressure inside the mouth and the volume increases and the water then will flow through the mouth and over the gills notice though the opercular valves so the operculum is the outside bony part of a uh, flap that covers the gills and the opercular valve is closed then the fish will close its mouth, okay, and you can see that with the buccal cavity closing, the buccal floor rises, and then the pressure increases and the volume decreases, forcing that water, that deoxygenated water now, through the opercular valve, which is now open. So the main question is, is how do fish exchange gases from the water through the gills. Now, um, in terms of water flow, you can see water flow going through the buccal cavity and it passes over the gills. And we'll talk about the structure of the gills in a minute um, and then out through the opercular valve. Now, here in the middle is um, what we call gill arches and these gill arches, they have blood vessels in them. Um, and those blood vessels then have capillaries that go through each of these tiny structures called gill filaments. You notice these gill filaments are in, um, there's two gill rows of filaments per gill arch. And then if we look more closely at what is on the gill filaments, you'll notice that then we've got these other structures called lamella or lamellae. Um, and you'll notice that the water flows over the lamellae and um, the blood is going the opposite direction. So blood flow from the capillaries from deoxygenated to oxygenated um, to ox well, oxygen poor blood to oxygen rich and the water is flowing the opposite way, which is known as a counter current exchange. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's have a closer look at the gill filaments. So as I said, you've got two arteries, so arteries with oxygenated blood from the gills and deoxygenated blood from the gills as well. And you'll notice the two rows of gill filaments at 90 degrees to each other. And then on them are these semicircular structures called lamella. And then on the lamella, you can see that there are blood capillaries going through the lamella and you can see that the blood is flowing around through that direction, going that way, whereas the water flows in the opposite way, that way. So it's going in a what we call counter current flow. So the purpose of this is uh, threefold. Is one is to increase the surface area to make a very large surface area. You've got very thin membranes. So the lamella are only one cell thick, um, so therefore, make, therefore making extremely thin. And because of the flow of blood, you're getting it's maintaining a concentration gradient to ensure that um, there is a fast diffusion occurring. And also with the thin membrane, sorry, you're getting a, um, a shorter diffusion pathway. OK, so just to summarize what I was just saying, so gill filaments, they give a large surface area and so increase the rate of diffusion. They're covered in tiny structures called lamellae 
uh, that actually increases the surface area even further. They have a single thin layer of epithelial cells and lots of blood capillaries to speed up the rate of diffusion. So how does oxygen exchange from the water into the blood? Well, it's not by what I'm showing you now. So um, I'm trying to show you here what would happen if there was what we call a parallel flow. So a parallel flow is when the water and the blood would be moving in the same direction. So if you look at the graph, you can see saturation with oxygen and the distance along the gill plate on the X axis. And what you'll notice initially, yes, you will have a large diffusion gradient between water and the blood because the blood has less oxygen. It's deoxygenated and the water has lots of oxygen. So you will get a, a diffusion uh, gradient um, for part of the distance along the gill plate. However, you'll get to a point where you reach an equilibrium. So basically only 50% of the oxygen from the water diffuses into the blood, which is not, if it's a really active fish, this is not going to be sufficient for life processes. So what actually happens is what we call the counter current flow. So again, we've got the same graph, but this time you've got blood traveling in one direction and water in the other. Now, what you'll notice is that through the, as the water flows over the gills, Diffusion is occurring at each point across the gill, across the whole length of the gill. So a diffusion gradient is maintained all the way across the gill lamellae. Almost all the oxygen from the water will diffuse into the blood. So it's a very effective and efficient way of, of removing oxygen from the water. Now, obviously, then the water is deoxygenated and what will happen is that the fish will close its mouth and therefore increase the, in, uh, decrease the volume and increase the pressure and push out that deoxygenated water through the opercular valve. So here is a common exam question. So a fish uses its gills to absorb oxygen from water. Explain how the gills of a fish are adapted for efficient gas exchange. What I suggest you do is pause the video, maybe write your answer and then um, press play again and we'll have a look at the answer together. OK, so um, the ways that gas exchange could be improved is the large surface area provided by the gill filaments or the lamellae. You've got a short diffusion pathway. This provides a short diffusion pathway from the water to the blood. So water is always next to the blood with a lower concentration of oxygen. Flowing blood that maintains the concentration gradient. So there's a steep concentration gradient at ventilation removes deoxygenated water and replaces it with oxygenated water. So you can also men mention the countercurrent flow. So water and blood are moving in the opposite directions and therefore it maintains a concentration gradient. So no equilibrium is reached. I hope you found that quick summary useful. Um, I've also done another video for the A-level required practical, which is the fish gill dissection. So please do check that one out. Again, hope you found it useful and I will see you soon.